Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we will compare two salaries, the budgeted salary that we have on our salaries table and payroll salaries that we currently have. Our mission today is to compare my budgeted salaries to current salaries to see if there is any discrepancy if I'm paying someone that I shouldn't have paid that much or if I'm paying someone that um, I'm paying less and I need to adjust their salary because they get mad if they don't get the salary correctly. So my uh, position is to make sure that everyone is getting what they should get and not more, not less. Now, we will start by going into our salaries from payroll and we'll create table. If you remember from our previous classes, how to insert a table, we will just click on one of the cells or select the whole data, go to insert, hit this table, and it recognizes what we want to insert. It is A1 to C50, C, C151, which is correct. My table has headers. Yes, it does. First name, last name, and per paycheck. Okay, now we have tables. Now, I let's say I downloaded this data from my payroll um, company, and payroll company usually gives you per pay rate, and sometimes payroll company doesn't have annual rates, or annual rates sometimes are mistaken on payroll companies. So I usually go with per paycheck, I multiply that per paycheck by how many paychecks I'm paying, and then I calculate annual, and then I compare annual to annual. Now, as you can see, A, column A to column C is a table, but column D is not a table. And I want to start typing on column D, and I want that to be part of the table. Now, you can change this and extend the table to D, but it can also be done by just typing the label. So we'll type a label and we'll, we'll name this annual. If I'm typing that right next to the table, Excel recognizes that you want to include that in table. As soon as I hit enter, it expands the table and it includes that column. If you don't want that to happen and if that was done by mistake, that wasn't your intention, Command Z or Control Z will bring it back to just the annual um, label, not in the table. I want to go back, so it's Command Shift or Control Shift Z, which will redo what I wanted to do. Now, since I have two tables to work with now, what I want to do is to change names of these tables. Not to have table one, table two, table three, but have different names that make sense to me. So I will go to salaries tab, I will click anywhere here, and then I will go to table tab of the menus. Then I will change this to salaries. Now this table's name changed to salaries. Let's go back to salaries from payroll and I want to change this name to payroll salaries. You remember camel casing? This is what camel casing is. P capital, the rest of the word is lowercase. S capital, the rest of the word will be lowercase. I hit enter, now my table names changed and let's click and check if they are. Yes, payroll salaries and salaries, they changed. Now I want to calculate my annual salary. Since I am on a bi-weekly pay per pay 26 paychecks, I need to multiply this amount by 26 to come up with my annual salary. So I just say equal, I select this, um, which is per paycheck amount. I multiply that by 26. And the whole table is ready. That's good. I like it. For this table, let's change the format a little bit so that we know 
we are working on different things. Uh, let's go on. Let's go to orange now. Orange and blue. Blue will know that it's our budget table, and orange will know that it's our uh, payroll table. Okay, now I brought my. I calculated my annual salary. What's next? I need to bring salary from here for this person for Lorraine one Antwerp and compare her salary to the payroll salary. Now let's go back. If you remember H lookup and we said that you know we have a sibling VLOOKUP, we will be using VLOOKUP in this case. VLOOKUP looks up a value that is an exact match. Now what happens here, we have the first person is a different person than our other list. That's why we cannot just sort data and copy and paste because sometimes one list can have five people, other list can have seven people. Even if you sort, the data doesn't match. So sometimes you need to look up data on other sheet with VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP works the same way. It's asking for what you need to look for, where you need to look for, what you need to bring back, and if you want exact match or similar value. Now, here I have first name, last name separate, which I cannot use. So I want to create another column. So I will change the label to full name and we will use concatenation formula to match the exact concatenation on the other table, which was equals first name and quote space quote and last name. The reason I use and it's easier, it's obvious, it's there. I don't need to put formula. I do not need to put commas there and list all the values. It's more visible for me. I like doing that. If you prefer using the formula, feel free to use concatenate formula instead. Now, we need to bring their salary from the budget sheet to this sheet to compare two salaries. Let's label another column. We will say salary from budget sheet. Again, it just added that column to my table. Okay, what do we need to do? Now, we need to go back to our sheet. Now, here we can use static line. Why? Because we don't need to change that line every for every employee. What I mean by that, we will start here, which is E. We will start at full name. Remember, the first column for VLOOKUP and first column for HLOOKUP needs to be all the data that you're looking for. If you start here, but your data is here that you're looking for, VLOOKUP will not work. It will not give you what you want. So we want full name and we will select this whole column from E to H and we will bring one, two, three, four. So we'll bring value from the fourth column. Now, if you remember, I was all talking about how it's easier to refer the tables and it's easier to use the tables. Now will be the time to put it in action. Now we'll start by typing VLOOKUP. Our first value is what I'm looking for, which is name, comma, and then I need to tell Excel where to look for it. As we said, we will be choosing the other tables columns from full name to the salary. So we don't want to use all of it. We know what the table is called. It's salaries. So we'll start by typing salaries. It's Excel gives you an option of salaries. You say yes by hitting tab. 
That's what I want to use. And then we will type square bracket. Square bracket is located right next to letter P. I will hit square bracket. And I will hit square bracket one more time. I will tell you why. Now this first square bracket is, is a, a range square, square bracket. And the second square bracket is a column square bracket. Now the second bracket, after the second bracket, let's choose where we want to start. We want to start at full name. So I will hit tab after I choose that. I will close the square bracket. I will put column there. I will open another square bracket and then I will say FY21 salaries. And then I will close. I will close one more time. So it basically says, go to salaries table. Bring me from full name to FY21 salaries bring me that table so look into that table i will put another column and now i need to put column index which column index i need to bring i have four columns there i'll start with one two three four i need four for salaries so i will put four and false and the false if you remember it is for exact match i hit enter it brings all of my salaries. But since I did not format this column, it gives me a, you know, a number that is not legible and it's not good. So what I will do, I will choose E, I will take this format and I will paint it so that it matches my format. Um, let's make this wider. And since this label exceeds the line what i want to do i want to click on that and i want to wrap text so that the width of the columns match okay now we have our salary from our payroll our salary from our budget now it's time to compare those now there are two ways of comparison one is just to say difference it will be included in the table and going on the first one typing equals this one minus the payroll one and that will calculate so if you have an exact match it will show as zero these lines mean zero but if you have a discrepancy as you can see for some of them we do have a discrepancy Danielle has 1845 difference that we think it's a mistake there's also a way to check these differences by applying conditional formatting which we can cover on our future classes but for now we want to focus on what what can be done by using vlookup and hlookup so vlookup brought all the salaries um for for those people and let's check one of our work first one will be Mamie Babinox or Babino I cannot pronounce names we will go to salaries and find that employee check their salary 65 508 we'll go back and check 65 508 it is correct it's an exact match it's what we wanted to bring and if we brought wrong information this whole thing would have been wrong this whole thing would have shown the differences so a lot of zeros it's a good sign we're doing a good job we only missed a few people that we need to take care of again this was our vlookup class leave us comments and if you like the video give us a thumbs up and subscribe and if you if you want to hit the bell button to be notified on our future classes thank you and see you the next class